world. Where the number of movies available is great, but many are so bad. You'll learn a new definition of hate. One man sifts and reviews through the movie sludge. One man will be the movie cop, jury, and judge. He goes by many names, but you know him by Movies Merida. Hey, all you beautiful movie-loving people out there, live from a red carpet somewhere, surrounded by celebrities, this is the Movies America Podcast with Van Ebert, where movie reviews meet cold brews, Van will review your favorite and maybe not so favorite movies, while enjoying some ice-cold beers and saying cheers! Now let's head into the theater and join our illustrious movie reviewer du jour, who's no doubt got the beer ready to pour, Van Ebert! Holy colossal comic book chaos, Batman! We're really snookered now, we better get to the Batcave! Hey everybody, yes, better get to the Batcave here and listen to Movies America Podcast. Yeah, this is your humble host, Van Ebert. Bringing you a Batastic Movies America podcast. Yes, we are continuing with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy today. So, on our last episode, we or I brought you the recap of 2005's Batman Begins, which of course brings us to the uh, PS de Resistance of the Dark Knight trilogy. Not only considered the best movie in this trilogy, but considered the best comic book movie ever, and in a lot of people's opinions, the best movie ever. Yep. Sorry, Casablanca. Sorry, Maltese Falcon and Citizen Kane. Yep, The Dark Knight is numero uno in a lot of people's minds here, so we are going to go and get into The Dark Knight. Where do we begin? A year ago, these uh, cops and lawyers wouldn't dare cross any of you. I mean, what happened? So what are you proposing? It's simple. Kill the Batman. <laughs> Here's my card. Bruce, this is Harvey Dent. Rachel's told me everything about you. I certainly hope not. You once told me that we'd be together. Did you mean it? Bruce, don't make me your only hope for normal life. You're Alfred, right? That's right, sir. Any psychotic ex-boyfriends I should be aware of? Oh, you have no idea. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're tonight's entertainment. Well, hello, beautiful. You look nervous. I've seen now what I have to become to stop men like him. The night is darkest just before the dawn. I promise you, the dawn is coming. And here we go. This city deserves a better class of criminal. I'm gonna give it to him. No! <laughs> You'll see. I'll show you. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. in the back pot, sir? In the middle of the day, Alfred? Not very subtle. The Lamborghini, then. Much more subtle. Well, that trailer makes me want to watch that movie for the 14,113th time. 
Absolutely. And we're going to get into the review of one of my favorite movies here shortly. But first, we have to get into the crucial info, the crucial tidbits that I want to share with you real quick. And just wanted to let you know here that this podcast is on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many other platforms. And if you happen to be on Apple Podcasts, uh, please, por favor, senor and senoritas, give it a five-star rating and give it a review. It doesn't have to be a long review. Just scroll down to the very bottom of all the episodes in Apple Podcasts and just give it a five-star rating and a quick review. You know, a review could just be like, hey, this is terrible. Hey, this is great. Man, I love this podcast. And uh, and then you, you download the episodes there as well. Uh, there's a follow option uh, on the uh, podcast page there in Apple Podcasts to follow, and so that automatically downloads all the episodes there for you. Makes everything so so convenient, right? Easy, right? Yes, easy like Easy Mac. And also the the podcast is on moviesmerica dot com as well. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram under moviesmerica. If you want to use that to share anything with me. Uh, answer any questions I might have during these reviews, pose any questions to me, you know, tell me how, uh, you know, uh, freaking fantastic I am or how phenomenally terrible I am. You know, hey, you know, it's uh, it's, it's up to you, right? So it's a, it's a free country, right? And also, uh, as you know, if you've listened to any of my other episodes, I typically down a beer uh, just to, you know, keep hydrated, keep uh, my, my whistle wetted during uh, this review here, but I'm going to forego that uh, for the next few episodes here. I'm right in the middle of this uh, 75 hard fitness program where one of the rules for 75 days is no booze for 75 days. I know, I know. It's it's trials and tribulations uh, over here, but uh, I'll try to make it through it. I think I can. I think I can, but uh, yeah, well, so, and then with that, you know, now that we've got all that uh, Those goodies out of the way. Let's get right into, again, like I said, one of my favorite movies of all time. Sometimes it kind of leaps into the the top spot of my favorite movies here. Depending on the day, it kind of alternates between Dances with Wolves and The Shawshank Redemption. So, but, you know, ask me on, you know, on Thursday and it could be The Dark Knight. Ask me on Friday, it's the Shawshank Redemption. I mean, it's just, it's it's all over the place. Those are all three great movies. But, yeah, this, this movie is one of my favorite movies just because it had uh, such an impact. I mean, I, I, I like Batman Begins. I, I, I loved it. You know, I th- thought it was great. I thought it was a great start to the, to, to Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. But the Dark Knight, it had like all this buzz before it, you know, because when Batman Begins came out, sure, a lot of people saw it. I mean, it made it made bank at the box office. You know, it, it was profitable for Warner Brothers, but it wasn't like the water cooler kind of, hey, talk to everybody about it, you know, like, oh, yeah, I just ran into my third cousin, uh, you know, Slappy over at uh, McDonald's, and he just couldn't stop talking about the Dark Knight. Oh, yeah, you too. We well, yeah, my sister Kate went and saw it, and she couldn't stop talking about, uh, you know, Batman Begins either. Like, and it was nothing like that, nothing like that. But the difference with the Dark Knight is there was all this buzz and people talking about it even before the movie came out, and... I think that was helped with some fantastic marketing from uh, Warner Brothers where they had all this viral marketing where, you know, you could get on a website uh, and it's like a, you could they, they held like fake Harvey Dent uh, campaign rallies. And then the, the, the Dark Knight had a, like a website where you go to and try to uh, solve a mystery and you're know, looking for clues, stuff like that. I mean, just some great viral marketing. They even had a uh, a movie theater in Texas and they uh they went a little too far with it here to, <laughs> to the part, to the point where they had to issue an apology, but they uh sent uh, like a birthday cake uh with a like a fake bomb in it, like uh, the bomb that's implanted in the, into the uh, into the the stomach cavity of the of the the guy in in the dark night there that that uh, Joker did that too. Well, they they put the bomb like that inside of a cake, but it was a fake bomb. And they sent it to a TV station, and they, they it's something like that. They they gave us some instructions, imply like to dig into the cake, and then they saw the uh, the bomb in there, and uh, the bomb also had like a 
a couple of, you know, uh, had an announcement about, oh, hey, we're going to be having this uh, Dark Knight premiere at this movie theater in Texas. I mean, so it was stuff like that. And then, and then it got so bad that uh, the movie theater ended up calling the bomb squad. <laughs> and then the movie theater had to make a, you know, big apology uh, about that. So it was like, so, I mean, it was a phenomenon like that. You had people doing marketing like that. I mean, and so people wouldn't stop talking about uh, The Dark Knight. And then also, like six months before the movie came out, they released just the opening scene, the bank heist scene, out so everyone uh, could see that. And I remember seeing that early and that just just amping my anticipation uh, for this movie. I mean, because... I remember seeing the scene and, you know, when the opening scene where it's, it's zooming into the cityscape and, and the window, you know, blows out and it is immediately, it looked different than Batman Begins. The cinematography was different. It had that sense of realism and tension, you know, and, and foreboding. And, and, and it was just, yeah, just the opening scene with the, you know, the bank heist and, that that I'm sure a lot of people saw that, and that really got the anticipation going. And I I mean I I straight up saw this. Uh, you know, this came out 2008. So at the at the time you're listening to at the time uh, I first made this podcast episode, that was 14 years ago, folks. 14 years ago. <laughs> if you want to feel old, 14 years ago. So 14 years ago, I went to the very first uh, showing for the general public. Yeah, I'm not trying to act like I'm bigger. And, uh, than I am. I didn't get like some early, you know, movie premiere pass or anything like that. No, it just, just they they did back then. Like what is common now, they always have like the you know the, the Thursday night midnight showing uh, before you know the the official Friday opening. And so I remember, yeah, staying up until like eleven eleven thirty at night, you know, and then going like to the almost midnight showing of this. And then I still went to work uh, the next day, but I didn't care because. I was going to see this movie as early as I possibly could see it. And, and man, it did not disappoint. And then, you know, of course that, that, that theater was packed. I mean, just to the gills and yeah, it's just, I think, so the bank heist scene, it was, it, you know, I, again, I'd seen it on my computer, you know, my computer screen, it's nothing compared to, to a movie theater screen. And, just watching that bank heist scene and again, them zooming in on the soundscape or in the cityscape and that window blowing out. And then it's just that Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard score just, you know, just starting up, you know, just, I mean, just that pounding, you know, music, you know, as I mean, it just, just gets you all pumped up, right? Just gets you, just gets you amped up for the scene and watching that. I'm like, man, this is like some sophisticated, you know, just uh, just crime thriller, slick uh, filmmaking right here. You know, just with the great editing and the you know each of the each of the robbers like taking each other out and and because you know, that was something I'd never seen before. I'd never seen that. Okay, like this, you know, this this uh, this robber you know does his job, then he gets taken out by the other robber, and then the robber does. His job opening up the, the the vault, and then he gets taken out, and so on and so forth. It's just like you know, honor among thieves is right out the window, <laughs> and, and and I thought that well, okay, you know, I saw that, and I was like, okay, that's another thing. That's yet another thing that sets not only this bank heist scene apart from other bank heist scenes in in movies. I mean, you didn't see that in Heat, you know, with Robert De Niro and Val Kilmer. I mean, that's that you could tell that that was a a, a big inspiration for this scene, but they didn't even do. Th- you know, the robbers taking each other out in that movie here. And so Christopher Nolan really stepped up uh, the coolness factor in in this movie. I mean, just like the whole part, you know, it's like, hey, where's the uh, other guy? Uh, Joker told me to take him out. Oh, yeah, well, the Joker told me something similar. No, 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 no! You know, it just, <laughs> it's just like, it's it, it was just a wow. Just, I mean, it's, my eyes were popping out of my head when uh, I saw that. And... It was cool, you know, when I think the the first character you see on screen in this movie is is the Joker. I mean, we don't know it at the time, but they show the Joker, you know, standing on the street corner, you know, with the the mask hanging out of his hand and the and you know, the the truck pulls up to, and he gets in. And of course the whole time you don't even know it's the Joker, so it's just again that sense of surprise 
uh, that's going on uh, throughout uh, this movie. Just kind of just you know just keep you keep you on on your toes, and then you know then you get like one of the great uh, comic book or you know comic book villain introductions. You know where you got you know, William Fickner, you know as the I guess the bank manager comes out there, you know, just unloading with the shotgun, and you know, it's like, "You guys are dead. Do you guys know who you're stealing from?" And 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 uh, you know, so that he gets uh, taken out by by the Joker, and then he just got that great Joker reveal. You know, it's like what William Fickner's like, he's like, "What do you believe in?" It's like, "I believe that which does not kill you makes you." Stranger, you know, it just takes off the mask. I mean, it just it, it reveals the the Joker face. I mean, it was just epic and fantastic that reveal, and it just and just the way the Joker carried himself in that scene. You know, he's just you know nonchalantly, just like you know, no look shooting people. You know, you, you could tell he can handle himself uh, with weapons. You know, and he just it showed that he's a planner, right? I mean, he's this is just one of many you know, bank heist that he's, 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 he's in, you know, that he's pulling off cause he's, this, this is a mob bank, right? And he's, he's basically robbing all these mob banks and, and, and getting away with it, you know? And, uh, I mean, it's just, what can you say uh, about the Joker? And I'm going to get to the Batman and, and all the other characters there, but I think, you know, I think we can all agree that the character that gets talked, talked about the most from the Dark Knight is of course, uh, the Joker played by the late, great, gone too soon, Heath Ledger. Uh, who posthumously won the Best Supporting Actor um, Oscar for this role. And don't give me that, he only won because he died. That's the only reason he won. He, if he hadn't died, they wouldn't have given him that award. Bump that. They would have still given him the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. Okay? So stop being Johnny Raincloud. Stop being, stop being that guy. They would have still given him the, the, the award right there. And... You know how could they not? I mean, how could they not? They, you know, just his performance in in this. I mean, he just gave it this distinctive, memorable, you know, just flavor to the role that just, just sticks with you. You know, and he's got some great lines. I mean, I just love the lines. You know, when he's, <laughs> you know, when uh, when Gamble's like, uh, "You think you could steal from us and get away with it?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or he's talking to Harvey Dent. You know, he gets into a Harvey Dent's, a two-faced Harvey Dent's, uh, you know, hospital room. He's like, he's like, I'm like a dog chasing a car. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught it. You know, <laughs> just great. I mean, he's, when he walks into the hospital room and he first sits down, he's, and Harvey recognizes that, you know, that Joker sitting down. He's like, hi. <laughs> Just the comic timing and just the the delivery of the lines, you know. And uh, another another one another one of my favorites is uh, after Batman crashes his bat pod after you know he's he's threatening to take out Joker and run Joker over, and the Joker looks like he's about to you know stab and and, and take out uh, Batman with a knife, and then all of a sudden uh, Commissioner Gordon you know pops up out of the car and uh, pulls a gun on Joker to stop Joker from killing Batman. And <laughs> Joker's just like, ah, could you just give me a minute here? <laughs> just hilarious. Just hilarious. And then, you know, I mean, he's burning the, burning the cash, you know, the big pile of cash, you know, in front of, him, in front of the, you know, the Chechen uh, mob leader there, you know, mob boss. And, you know, the mob boss is like, oh, my God, he's burning all the money, you know. And, uh, you know, Joker's like, I'm only burning my half. <laughs> He's burning the whole pile. And, of course, you know, the ultimate, the ultimate was the ultimate line that he had, you know, that really just just punctuated the kind, the kind of character, the kind of Joker character that we're going to see throughout the whole movie is when Gamble sends, you know, his guy after, you know, to, to take out the Joker. And the Joker's like, you want to see a magic trick? Ta-da! It's God, you know, just <laughs> he just takes the poor guy and just plunges that pencil right through his eye, eyeball, right stabbing at his brain. And, uh, you know, since it's PG-13, you know, thankfully they can't show that. But you get the idea. And I and, and when that went down, I yeah, my, my jaw hit the hit the floor when when I saw that. I was like, wow, no, this is not 
this is not Jack Nicholson's Joker, and it definitely isn't Cesar Romero's uh, Joker from uh, you know the '60s Batman series. Uh, this is uh, Heath Ledger is bringing it uh, with this role, and uh, you know, and then oh, I, I I would be remiss, you know, if I you know if I didn't include the scene you know, where he uh, he finally he finally gets to take out uh, Gamble, you know, he fakes dead, and they throw him on the pool table, and and it's like oh yeah, like de- dead. That's five hundred thousand. How about alive? You know, and he, just, he takes out he takes out gamble gamble there, and he's uh, he just pulls out the whole. There's a lot of potential for aggressive expansion. So, which one of you fine gentlemen would like to join our team? Oh, there's only one open spot right now. So we're gonna have tryouts. <laughs> it was like the the busted pool cue down and they gotta like battle to the death you know they don't show it but even without without them showing it it spells out like wow how brutal uh that that must have been and you know i another thing about this movie is like you know there is no wasted scenes in this movie that's the beauty of christopher nolan christopher nolan he uh he you know he he's he he loves movies Obviously, he's a filmmaker. He goes through all the toil and strife that it, it, it is to be a filmmaker. So you gotta love movies. But I think he wants to make movies that entertain you and 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 uh, you know and flexes your mind, right? And he wants to keep things moving. You know, he doesn't want to just you know just stay on one scene too long. And again, this movie is it's pretty much a four act movie, and this movie's like what you know two and a half hours long at least, and. That's the thing I love, love about this this movie is like in the scenes there's no wasted time in them, um, and that's one of the complaints about the new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson is is it's it's almost three hours long and the reason it is because they take just forever in some scenes, people walking around really slow and barely talking and taking forever to get to the point of the scene. Not with the Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan's like bam 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 get right to the scene get right through. Uh, everything that you're trying to do with the scene, uh, if uh, there's uh, you know something, there's a, a, a shot that doesn't introduce new information, he pitches it, you know, and him and uh, Lee Smith as editor did a great job uh, with that. That's a phenomenal job. It's a, you know efficiency in filmmaking, you know, and and another big thing about uh, you know this this movie is that you know you've got the great composition the great musical composition the great score by Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard I mean it's very haunting it's 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 very haunting and very uh you know very exciting you know it gets you like pumped up in some scenes you know like when he goes to Hong Kong to uh, get Lao and he's up on top of the you know the skyscraper and he's about to you know fly on down uh, to LSI Holdings skyscraper there to to take out Lau and just that great soundtrack you know that that great score that is just getting you pumped you know and it just shows you like this is just exciting and and captivating you know th- this scene and it just really does a, a great job and, and it's got some really uh, great emotional touches into the score just like it did in Batman Begins and so. And this is the last collaboration between Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard. Like in the the third movie, The Dark Knight Rises, it's just Hans Zimmer by by himself. But uh, you know, Hans Zimmer does a, a, a great job with you know just like the really you know just really the deep baritone, punchy parts of the soundtrack. And then James Newton Howard, he does some really great, captivating. Uh, just uh, d- s- scores that just get down to your core. One of the examples of James Newton Howard's contribution to the score is in the, one of the la- later scenes where Two Faces is you know, he's got he's grabbed uh, Gordon's son and he's threatening to kill him and you know he's like you know lie to him tell him it's gonna be okay lie like I did you know and it just that the that haunting score that's playing in that scene right there that's that's James Newton Howard that's just incredible it's incredible so but. Um, I mean, this this movie also gives you the chance to see Batman, you know, being more of uh, the detective, and that's one of the big things in a lot of Batman comic books is him being uh, a detective, you know, not just 
some guy flying around, um, you know, bashing on bad guys and driving that, you know, the the Batmobile. He's a detective in here uh, in this movie, so that, that and that's another thing about the, the new Batman. People talk about, oh, it's great to see the Batman, Robert Pattinson as a Batman, you know, having him do more detective work. And it, there's more of that in that movie, but you know, there's there's some of that in in the Dark Knight uh, as well. And what do you say about the action in this movie? I mean, the action is just fantastic. Um, you know, you've got just so many great set pieces in this movie. Uh, and it's great to see, you know, more practical effects in this movie, like the helicopter crash. I mean, that was, you know, there's CGI in this movie, you know, no doubt. I mean, it's definitely CGI in this movie, but... You know, that helicopter crashing, that was real. That was a real helicopter. Uh, the fire truck on, you know, on fire, that's all practical. And if you ever get a chance, like, look up the the behind-the-scenes of The Dark Knight where it's just scenes in Chicago, and it just, it just shows you them filming all the scenes in there, and it just really gives you an appreciation of how practical everything was in this. And, you know, just, like, the scene, the car chase scene, you know, where – the Dark Knight, you know, is in the uh, slaughter is the best medicine, you know, big semi truck there, and he's he's got the bazooka, and they're he's they're chasing down, uh, you know, the truck with Harvey Dent in there, pretending to be Batman, and and just that whole chase scene, like it's just really cool to see how that was all practically uh, done. Uh, of course, you know, them flipping the semi truck again, that was you know practical. I don't know how you do that in CGI, uh, you know, it just just the the money i mean the money that they put on the screen in this movie and it, it, it just 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 doesn't does, does just doesn't disappoint and and it adds to the epic scale the grand scale of this movie this movie is just it's bigger than life when you watch it it's it's not like any comic book movie i've ever seen and and you know up to that point and I mean, and, and and because of that, the Dark Knight it really is the measuring stick with with comic book movies. I mean, every single time a new you know comic book movie comes out, they're always like, "Well, is it better than the Dark Knight? Is it as good? You know, is it worse? Is it?" You know, I mean, it's it, the Dark Knight always comes up because yeah, this just set a whole level of excellence uh, with it. I mean, and it's got it's got you know deep and, and thematic themes to it. I mean, it's got drama it's got a love triangle of sorts you know with with Bruce Wayne and Rachel Dawes and and Harvey Dent I mean uh you know you it's 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 anguishing you know to one of the one of the, the subplots is it's anguishing to see you know Bruce Wayne I mean he's desperately trying to end the need for him to be Batman he's he's trying to end that you know he doesn't want to be Batman what he really wants to do is he wants to be with Rachel and he's desperately trying to end the need for Batman so he can be with Rachel, and that's why he's he's trying to get Harvey Dent, you know, to be the White Knight. You know, he wants to end the, the need for the Dark Knight, end the need for Batman, so that he can stop that and he can have a, a real life with Rachel, you know, his childhood friend. And then she ends up, you know, being killed. I'm like, wow, that's just that's you know that's that's a subplot that really draws you in, that that really endears you in this movie, and and it and it it's. All the more anguishing because she wasn't just a love interest, you know, to to Bruce Wayne and Batman. I mean, she was a love interest to Harvey Dent, and of course, her death, um, you know, is is what really sends Harvey Dent spiraling out of control, and you know, he becomes, uh, you know, Two Face. Uh, speaking of Two Face, I gotta say, you know, that you know the, the makeup effects that they use for you know for his Two Face uh, look there, they still hold up uh, to this day. I mean, still to this day, they hold up. And it's, I remember, yeah, first time I saw that and it was just, just shocking. I mean, you know, seeing that, um, and I also got to say it, it, that could not have felt great on his open wounds when he uh, was doing the shot of whiskey in the bar there. <laughs> I know it's not a real character. I know it's not a real movie, but you know, if this was real, you know, him doing that shot of whiskey, hitting those open wounds, ouch, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, not a good thing. Not a good thing, right there. I mean, that'll that uh, that that would get you every every single time. But, but I mean, just you know, and, and, and again, I mean, Aaron Eckhart as as Two Face Harvey Dent, 
you know, he he added some depth uh, to it as well, and and he was a very he's played it very charismatic charismatically, and he did a great job with Harvey Dent's arc, you know, because he started out as this ballsy, brave, um, you know. Uh, prosecutor, you know, the guy pulls a gun on him, you know, in court, you know, and it doesn't go off. And it's like, you know, you want to kill a public defender? I suggest you buy American. I mean, just, just, he was brave, right? And, but, but then he started slowly, slowly going the, down the path of darkness. And, you know, he does a you know, f- phenomenal job with that. But yeah, I could talk about the dark night for another seven hours, I swear to God. But uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up for right now here. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot for, Listening to this here, and, and next episode, we will get into The Dark Knight Rises. We're going to conclude uh, our recapping of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. And uh, again, that'll be with The Dark Knight Rises. And so check me out on Instagram and Twitter under Movies America. And so everybody, get out there. Those movies aren't going to watch themselves. All right. Take care. Hey, guys. Don't leave the video quite yet. Okay, I've got a popo. They're coming after me, and I don't have much time to tell you, but you need to like and subscribe this video right here, down below. It's right down there. It's just wait- it's waiting for you down there, okay? And make sure you watch these videos over here too. You'll be doing me a big favor. I'm gonna be in handcuffs pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching.